of CH4, we've got a carbon with four dots, or four valence electrons, hydrogen with one. We're trying to get enough electrons for each of these atoms so they're as stable as they can be. Hydrogen needs two, carbon needs eight, and sharing electrons in this way allows them to have uh, the most stable form for those that we can get to. For the Lewis dot formula then, we're going to squeeze the electrons between the elements. And we get a Lewis dot formula that looks like this. And then a Lewis formula replacing the shared pairs and only shared pairs with lines. We get this. So we go back to the Lewis dot formula to got, start looking at how to do a three-dimensional arrangement. So we have one two, three, four sets of electrons around a central atom. So we're going to have a tetrahedral electron pair shape. Okay. Um, and then what we're going to do in the next step is to take this tetrahedral electron pair shape and we're going to replace any shared pairs of electrons with the elements they are shared with. And all of these, all four of these are shared with hydrogen. So we're going to replace all four of the sets of electrons. Mr. Romero, are you with us over there? Thank you. You need to pay attention. You need to be taking notes. Okay. And so we have a tetrahedral molecular shape. We no longer have any long pairs on here. It's a tetrahedral molecular shape, yes. You don't want to finish looking at this before you go? Are you grading somebody's paper? Okay, well, you need to stay here until you finish grading the paper, okay? Unless you just absolutely have an emergency. All right, uh, so now we have to figure out, uh, well, actually, I don't even have to calculate the electronegativity here. Difference. I don't have to calculate the electronegativity difference. And here's why. All right, Nithmasong, do I have different bonds or just one kind of bond? One kind of bond, okay? So there's no um, problem with the kinds of bonds causing any uneven arrangement. There's an even arrangement of these bonds. They're the same kind of bonds all the way around, evenly spaced. So I have to have two conditions for a polar bond, don't I? Remember earlier, we said, wrote them down here. I have to have polar bonds and an uneven arrangement of those polar bonds. Well, regardless of whether this is polar, that's not uneven. So I don't have both conditions. This has to be nonpolar. Okay? Has to be nonpolar. But, okay, Tevin, I don't want to confuse you, but just to see, let's find out if it's polar anyway. We did this one earlier, didn't we? We did an H to C bond here. Okay? 2.55. We had electronegativity for carbon. 2.55. Had electronegativity for hydrogen, 2.1. We subtracted, we got 0 0.45, which we rounded up to 0.5. So we have an electronegativity difference for this carbon to hydrogen bond of 0 0.5, which if we look in our notes, that's clearly in the polar range. Because there was no empty slot there. The only reason we round it off is because there's an empty slot here. Okay? All right? All right. So you only round off when you have to. The way I've taught it in here is that you only round off under the conditions that I've given you. For addition and subtraction, you round off when there are empty slots to the right. Multiplication and division, you round off to match the least number of digits total for all the measured or calculated numbers in the problem. Okay, that was that's unit one stuff. Remember that? Okay. All right. So anyway, this is clear. This is you know just barely within our polar region here. All right. So the the bonds are polar, but we have to have both conditions. We have to have polar bonds and an uneven arrangement. Well, that's not uneven. That's evenly arranged all the way around. Evenly spaced, same kind of bonds all the way around. So this is a nonpolar molecule. Okay. And the, the explanation, the justification is it's nonpolar because the bonds 
are all evenly spaced or arranged. You could say arranged if you wanted to. Okay? That might be one way to justify it. You might have a different way of justifying it that's ju equally valid. Okay, as long as you're reaching, reaching a reasonable conclusion, how you state it is not as important as the fact that you state it in a reasonable way. Okay? Reasonableness is a very important concept in any of the sciences. All right, so we have to figure out that you have a uh, molecule shape that's correct. So that's three points. You have to... Um, come up with the fact that it's a nonpolar molecule. That's correct. You have to have the math for the electronegativity difference. Um, well, actually, you know, if you didn't have that, we could ignore that because I said that if you, you, if you say that they're all evenly spaced, that's enough. Okay? So if, they if their justification is nonpolar because the bonds are all evenly spaced, you can give them this three points even if they didn't do the math. That make sense? Does that confuse anybody too much to figure out how to grade it? You can. This would be a total of twelve points overall. They, if they show the math, that's worth three points. But if their justification is solid, they don't really need the math. So you can give them six points if their justification is solid. Does that make sense? Okay. Because if you don't need it, you don't need it. All right, so let's, um, once you got those graded and the scores written there and the total score at the top of the page, then you can turn, I need you to turn those in.